So, the assumption that was made by Boltzmann, Boltzmann many years ago was F2 in full position and momentum, I am not writing it F1, F1. That is what he was criticized. And uh, the story is that one nobody knows that he committed suicide because of the huge criticism he faced because of that. Because he introduced the probability concept of probability at in a time when everybody was very deterministic, very mechanical. So, long, long later, 50 years later, more than 50 years later, probably almost 70 years later, John uh, Carcourt, John Gamble Carcourt at Caltech made this similar approach. He said, okay, I want to get rho i on g2. Well, in homogeneous liquid rho 1 is not important. Important g2, radial 2 particle distribution function. That is what as we discussed yesterday, we get the static structure vector. That is all sub experimenting. So, g2 is the essential quantity of liquid state. But I cannot get that because G2 is connected to G3. So, we made the superposition approximation, Karkut superposition actually, probably should be called Karkut Boltzmann superposition approximation. That G3 is now G2, G2, G2. That means if we consider three particles in a, of course, there are many others around here. But we even here, but we want these three. We want these three these three R 1, R 2, R 3. What is now assumed is that this probability distribution of three particle correlation is a product of the two. So, G 3 is now given by product of 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3 and 3, 1 is called Karkut superposition approximation. When you make that and put it back into the uh, we get uh, put it back into this equation, this equation. So, now if I am doing an equation for g 2 n equal to 2, then n equal to 2, this is n 3, n 3 now I make g 2, g 2, g 2 and of that now I can integrate over 2 and 3, uh, no, I want this g 2 here I make as 1, 2. Then I have 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1. Then I can take the um, uh, 1, 2, which is out, uh, uh, out of this integral. Then I am left with the integration over 3, 4, 5, and all the n particles. And g2, 3, and g3, 1 remains inside. That means you get a simplification of the equations. We are not going to go into details of that. But with that, one can approximation the equation do a simple brown green, brown green equation which is something which we um, so what what is the result that we get when you do that the i don't sorry i don't have the brown green equation here yeah, the, so the from brown green equation which is a much much simpler equation just as i described then you get the radial distribution function of the liquid, bond gain equation. And now, you plot that against R. So, if the real equation is something like that, then bond gain equation falters on two counts. Bond gain equation gets the peak, but does not get the peak full. And bond gain equation does not get this maximum in a right place. So, bond gain equation falters. So, bond bridge equation falters 1 does not get the right, does not get the height right, height of the first peak out of phase. And bond green equation did not do too terribly a bad job, uh, but it was not good enough. Then there are lot of attempts made to extend it to 
lot of attempt made to extend the y v g equation. So, all the attempts gave some results, some good results and uh, uh, this is till 1990s people are working and uh, but then what happened the increasingly more and much better correction to Kirkwood supervision approximation brought in and uh, improvements were shown, but it did not work out that well that means it is become numerically very intensive and uh, somehow or other a closure has to be introduced because you know as I said G2 in terms of G3, G3 in terms of G4. So, whatever approximation you do at the level of G3 turns out to be critical in determining G2 and in addition to being the numerical uh, it did not quite uh, it was the, the, the progress was not satisfactory and this was still though certain people are working this line of research that means from Yogan bond gain equation which is exact going to radial distribution function kind of as a roadblock this is something one should know that it did not work out that well. Then what happened? Then something very interesting happened because science always has the way to find it finds its path and so that what happened is a different approach was taken. That approach goes back to 1920 when Onstein and Zarnicki introduced a beautiful equation called Onstein Zarnicki equation to describe the critical phenomena. 1920 to describe critical phenomena, light scattering at the uh, critical phenomena, these, 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 uh, it becomes opaque, you know, the critical opalescence that this is the huge fluctuations that can, they, they could even that time it was very clear that there is because by that time Einstein's theory of diffusion and the fluctuation theory of Einstein was there, Einstein already showed delta e square equal to C v. So, people understood that there are huge fluctuations are taking place. And by that time, why we equation was not even dreamt of. People had Weaver equation, but people did not have Weaver KY equation. Onsit and Zarnagi took it to themselves. They realized something that is, though it is a large scale fluctuations taking place that give into critical opalescence, there is also short range correlations. So, radial distribution function or the two particle correlation is diverging. But short range correlations need not diverge. I can build a long range correlation just like we do in Ising model. Out of long, so long range correlation can come out of short range correlations. Then how do I do that? What the Onstein Zanik equation does? They separate out. They said, okay, two particle correlation, which is called pair correlation, HR. HR is nothing but GR minus one. And one thing that I should tell that when I the, the way we have defined GR to radial distribution function or two particle correlations that but then it goes to 1. It goes to 1 because particles become uncorrelated and this is normalized, GR is normalized P2 R1 R2 by rho square. So, when they become independent of each other, P2 become rho square. So, it goes to 1, which is going to 1. So, it makes sense then to take out, uh, it makes sense to take out that 1. So, then radial distribution function 1 take 1 out and get the pair correlation function HR. This is a non trivial quantity because 1 is the trivial thing. So, this is it measures the correlation in addition to the product thing and what they said okay introduced a function called direct correlation function. So, two particle correlation in front of all in presence of all other uh, liquid particles is there is a one thing which is direct between them the direct correlation function and then there is something which is propagating through others. So, this correlation between these two is propagating between that. That because these molecules are interacting, in addition to direct, there would be something which is propagating through the 
uh, other particles. Like in hydrodynamics, there is a term called advective term, which is very similar to that or many other terms that we have that there is a direct interaction between them and there is interaction propagated through the medium. Then they said, okay, if its structure is very interesting, if HR equal to direct correlation plus other particle is at R prime, then I have a pair correlation up to R prime, then this guy and this guy have a direct interaction. Then similarly, there is a pair correlation then direct interaction that is the one summed up here. So, rho HR then gives the probability that you have a particle at, at that position all right or rho CR you can also uh, but that no position dependence so that comes out. Now, this is a beautiful structure which can be Fourier transformed and then it is a convolution and Fourier transform of a convolution is a product of the Fourier transforms of the two functions that is why the, the HK becomes CK plus rho CK HK. This is very very interesting because now I can get HK from there in terms of CK. So, HK let me solve now HK in terms of CK is I bring this HK here. So, I get 1 minus rho CK. So, HK is now CK by 1 minus rho CK. So, my Fourier transform of pair correlation function is given in terms of diet correlation function. That is very interesting that because I know the structure factor is given by SK is given essentially by GK by or by HK. So, my structure factor is uniquely re related to now structure factor HK is 1 plus. So, if I neglect uh, the forward scattering this term is neglected, then I have I have uh, uh, SK is 1 plus rho HK and I have HK is CK by 1 minus rho CK and then I get uh, SK 1 minus 1 over CK. So, the beauty is then that diet correlation SK is experimentally accessible. This is experimentally accessible. This is experimentally accessible. So, I get directly the very important quantity is the direct correlation function. So, this view this, this makes diet correlation function or this approach so useful. And then uh, there are this is another beautiful one GR. Now, if I now take the Fourier transform of this quantity, then SK almost mirrors almost mirror GR. And except this maximum is near 2 pi by sigma, nearest neighbor molecular distance, and structure factor, this is what experimentally we get. These probes, these beautiful thing probes, these nearest neighbor correlations and that is connected to CK. And CK plays a very important role, CK or CR plays a very important role in the statistical mechanics of liquids. But note the beautiful structure of SK and that this is very similar to what you get by GR. They are not exactly the same because contribution here comes from other peaks also, or second peak and third peak. But this predominant this order at the k equal to 2 pi by sigma measured in neutron scattering is a manifestation of the short range order. So, we started by saying liquid is unique because of the short range order that those short range order are you are seeing here reflected in radial distribution function and in the static structure factor. These are extremely important thing to the extent I believe that GR if not SK should be taught even in the high school level because that what determines liquid not just the density you know. I can have pretty high density liquid yeah, gas phase do not above the critical do not forget above the critical temperature you know I can have um, I can have this is my pressure temperature plane. So, 
So I am yeah, at the temperature here. I can go to very high pressure. I can go to very high pressure. I can go to very high density. Yes, but there it is called supercritical. This region is called supercritical liquid, supercritical water, supercritical carbon dioxide. There is a lot of work going on there. But here you see the nearest neighbor correlations are there, but much less. Uh, they are much sharper and much more structured here. Actually, if GR does not have that structure that liquid has here, if you do not have this structure, you would not have the liquid to solid transition. So, liquid to solid transition or freezing is critically dependent on the local structure. That is what I said that the local structure trans, transcends into the um, A structure, transcends into long range order. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, build up of short range correlation is essential for the establishment of long range correlation and the liquid is going to be crystalline or phase. So, uh, then there have been several approximations that have been made in order to. So, now if I go back to uh, Parker's Zeevic equation, then there is an equation, is a beautiful equation as I said it has a lot of beautiful things, uh, many, many implications, but one important thing is that it has one equation and two unknowns. One of the unknown is the two unknowns are H and CR. Now, I already told you that I can get CR from uh, HK, but that already uses the Parkas, uh, the uh, Onstein Zonic equation. So, the question of 2, uh, if I really need to develop a theory of liquid state, then I have to get one more equation. But we have an advantage now, which we did not have in YBG, that we know CR is a direct correlation. So, we can make intelligent cases at what should be the form of CR and that has been done to a great extent in anti equations like Parker's Zeevic equation, hypernated change equation, mean spherical approximations, all these things came in and they are the one, we will we'll describe a little of that, that like one. So, I now want one more relation between CR and GR and one popular one is given here by a definition called potential of mean force that G r is e to the power minus w r potential of mean force because if I this definition if I take log of ln G r then I get w r and G r is kind of a potential because these two particles are separated by r. So, it makes sense to write G r equal w r and w r is the potential of the mean force it makes sense. Then one uses several different combinations of it makes sense because you have a total you take the total for the indirect. So, total take and then from the total I take out all that are propagating through here that is the indirect then that of course, leaves me the diet collision function that makes sense this, this and then one uses several uses this thing to define an indirect R, then you have an equation. You have an equation between CR and GR, the second equation that you are looking for and that then gives you um, and that is worked out here. Approximation CR is given by in terms of this potential of mean force and you are and essentially C CR is GR minus YR is a very famous function, Y function and very much like yeah, one does by, by the MAR theory and the this this YR is nothing but GR to the power beta r and that has been uh, comes from these these kind of definitions and uh, GR minus this YR is a very important functions. Then you get one more equations, one more equation and this equation is when is when this equation is called Parker's equation and this we are not going through that the, uh, the derivations which are given in my book and uh, we might we might uh, back come back to you and with the, with the derivation of this this function this is a little bit more detailed 
and please make a note that this I did we, we, we should have done that and uh, and uh, and then Parker's Hewig equation. So, this extra equation in addition to Ornstein's Arnig equation completes our allows us to solve this for uh, GR and CR together and this approach is very successful is the Parker's Hewig equation and uh, then here is the comparison of the integral equations with simulation results and here is far better than what Born Green equation did. Look at that that is how does it do its simulation and uh, these are for Leonard Jones uh, all are for Leonard Jones systems of argon and so this is for argon near the triple point. So, if we write uh, pressure temperature then argon has so much of the studies have been done near the triple point and here is it near the triple point which a T star is 0 0.72 and rho star is 0 0.85 as I was saying this is a typical density of the liquids and uh, T star 1 is a good number to remember as and T star is cavity by epsilon. So, if I Leonard Jones potential is epsilon. So, T star is a dimensionless quantity which is cavity by e epsilon then the thermal energy divided by. So, T star is actually gives a measure of how high you are with respect to Leonard Jones well depth epsilon and these are the now you see Parker's equation picks up picks up quite a bit of the structure and it does very well here in uh, getting the second peak that is what born, born green approximation with Karpur superposition approximation failed to do. And then here one more thing hypernated chain approximation which sometimes does better sometimes does worse, but they are almost very close to each other for the for this course we do not have to go into the details of the difference, but they both do. So, basic then take home message is that theory of liquids have reached a uh, quite a satisfactory stage when it comes to this kind of spherical molecules like argon you know and also not too bad in, in, in uh, molecules when they are dumbbell like nitrogen uh, uh, or, or oxygen this kind of molecules though force field sometimes poses a problem, but it is reasonably ok. We can have a theory of liquid also uh, of course, we can get the simulations. So, all these beautiful work and uh, that Parker and hypernated chain means spherical approximation starts with Ornstein's Arnig equation have led us to a satisfactory understanding of the structure of liquids and the, 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 the short range order that is a liquid. Then what happens that from 1970 or 1980 essentially huge number of simulations started coming. The first argon simulation in a great way was done by Anisur Raman in 1964, 1972 Stillinger and Rahman, Rahman did the, all the calculations of the water that was a pioneering simulations. In a series of paper I think almost 8 papers they simulated and reported the water with a, a Stillinger potential ST2 potential which worked out quite well then much better work uh, been done. So, now simulations have become very powerful. So, complex liquids like you know say for example, I want to do methanol, I want to do ethanol, I want to do dimethyl sulfoxide as we talked in the last uh, two lectures. Then the radial since we need the radial distribution function for the further theoretical understanding of dynamical properties, they are now obtained directly from simulations. So, the emphasis of theoretical research and theoretical effort has drifted and has moved away from these kind of analytical work, analytical followed by numerical work that is Parker Civic equation and hypernetic chain tells you. It has moved from there, it has moved to the domain of simulations and then one gets the radial distribution function or three particle correlation functions directly from simulations. The issue then become the issue of the force field. In order to get simulation to agree with the experiment, we need very good force field, how the molecules interact with each other. That explains the present emphasis of all grand proposals, theory, research work is development of force field. Because computers have reached a stage that if you give me the force field, I can calculate the radial distribution function. 
I can calculate the three particle correlations, I can calculate the diffusion equation, velocity correlation function. The problem remains you know when I want to do long time behavior then simulations can or cannot give you, but you basic many very interesting features come with simulation cannot explain. Just numbers, numbers do not suffice, you need to have a theory, you need to have equations ok. So, that is what uh, the theory of liquids it uh, stops here, the one thing that I have not given the derivation is the derivation of the Parker's Zubik equation that is given in my book and we might take a class on to come to that just a 15 20 minutes class to uh, make the derivation which I do not have with me right now and well we I would need, need to talk a little bit about the wire function and other things and with that we uh, we, we stop the, the discussion on theory of liquids and uh, and uh, we leave you with this beautiful picture of GR and R and that this defines actually liquid in our mind this these two pictures that are given you in slides define the picture. Okay then, bye for now.